Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you are doing well. Well, happy preparation day. Happy preparation day. So how are you today? How are you today? It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. So how are you doing today, my sister, my brother? So may I ask you, did you take time out to study? Remember, we must study the word. This is a must, must, must. This is our instruction book. And we know that the solution to every issue is Jesus Christ. And he states, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And that is John 3, 16. Let us go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this beautiful day, Father God. Right now, Father God, I ask you that you will decrease me so that you will be increased, Father God. Allow your Holy Spirit, Father God, to take full control. I thank you in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, so our topic today was, is going to be Christ's righteousness makes obedience possible. Christ's righteousness makes obedience possible. But before we go into that, let us go into our scripture reading. And that is coming from Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 19. Matthew chapter 5 verses 17 through 19 and it says think not that i have come to destroy the law or the prophet i am not come to destroy but to fulfill for verily i say unto you till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be per be fulfilled whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach man so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his words. So let's go into uh, Christ's righteousness makes obedience possible. And for some reason, I feel as though I have a bug on me. So, but see, I'm under the tree, so uh, oh, I was over on this side, um, then the, the lighting wasn't right, then I was under too many trees, and, and when I go inside, I find I see all these bugs on me, so trying to avoid the bugs, it's kind of hard. Now, I'm in the country, so I don't know why I'm trying to avoid the bugs. They're here anywhere, anyway, and it doesn't make no difference whether I close the door or, you know, for whatever they do they go in they get inside they get inside so let's go into the topic Christ's righteousness makes obedience possible they said it was impossible for the sinner to keep the law of God which was holy just and good but this impossibility was removed by the impartation of the righteousness of Christ to the repenting believing soul the life and the death of Christ in behalf of sinful man were for the purpose of restoring the sinner to God's favor through imparting to him the righteousness that would meet the claims of the law and find acceptance with the Father. But it is ever the purpose of Satan to make void the law of God and to pervert the true, the true meaning of the plan of salvation. Therefore, he has originated the falsehood that the sacrifice of Christ and Calvary's cross was for the purpose of freeing man from the obligation of keeping the commandments of God. He has imposed upon the world the deception that God has abolished his constitution, throw away his moral standard, and made void his holy and perfect law. Had he done this, at what terrible expense would it have been to heaven? Instead of proclaiming the abomination of the law, Calvary's cross proclaimed in tender tones its immutable and eternal character, meaning unchangeable and eternal character. Could the law have been abolished and the government of heaven and earth and the unnumbered worlds of God maintained, Christ need not die. The death of Christ was to forever settle the question of the validity of the law of Jehovah. Having suffered the full penalty 
for the guilty world, Jesus became the mediator between God and man to restore the repenting soul to favor with God by giving him grace to keep the law of the Most High. Christ came not to destroy the law or the prophet, but to fulfill them to the very letter. The atonement of Calvary vindicates the law of God as holy, just, and true, not only before the falling world, but before heaven and before the world's unfallen. Christ came to magnify the law and to make it honorable. So that concludes my topic today. Christ's righteousness makes obedience possible. Okay. So on Monday, we're going to go into a review of what we have uh, covered on chapter 18. And that is, men may be as pure in his spheres as God is in his. So we're going to do a review on that on Monday. So may I share with you my devotion? Let me drink some water first. Here we go. And this is, hold on. To whom shall I confess? Mm. To whom shall I confess? I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sins. And this is coming from Psalms 32 verses 5. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I, Father God, I thank you, Father God, that you have not left me here by myself, Father God. Continue to allow the Holy Spirit, Father God, to take full control. I thank you in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, it says, my dear sister, there are some things that are to be confessed to God alone. If you have wronged a brother or a sister, you have the, the light given you in the word. If thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there remembers that thy brother has aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, go, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. And this is coming from Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. It says, it says here, it says, so if your brother has an art, if your brother has wronged you, right? So you see that she is the one that going to the person that wronged. And in, when we're thinking about right and wrong, is the person that's in the right goes to the person that's in the wrong and get it right. Because you know and I know how hard it is for people to come and say, you know what, I made a mistake. I mean, that that's a mature Christian to come and say I made a mistake but we have a lot of immature Christians and so uh, is the person that's in the right go to the person that's in the wrong and get it right and you go uh, in private and resolve the issue then if that is not resolved um, with you and the person then that's when you bring another party in order to resolve the issue at the end of the day my sister brother we all have to examine ourselves and and check and see if we have offended someone and get it right and it goes on if your sins is between you and God you need not give publicity to it but confess it to God Often poor, weak mortals act very inadvisedly in the matter of confessing their sins to human beings. I'd advise you to take your case to the Lord Jesus in prayer. Believe that he hears you and that when you confess your sins and repent and walk humbly with God, you will find pardon. Act like one whom the Lord has corrected in order to purify and save you. Never give up your faith and hope in God. Cling to his promises. Do not trust in your feelings, but in the naked word of God. Believe the assurance of the Lord. Take your stand upon the plain, thus said the Lord, and rest there, feeling or no feelings. Faith is not always followed by feelings 
off saying you know i'm feeling so good i'm feeling so good no 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 but hope thou in god trust fully in him my sister trust in the lord as a little child trust in his let me go back my sister trust in the lord as a little child trust its earthly parents cling to the savior let nothing separate you from let me go back let nothing separate your soul from god for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life and this is john 3 16. look for mercy and expect mercy look for mercy and expect mercy look continually for blessings see them acknowledge them and do not complain do not fret do not cast blame upon god but say oh lord i do believe thou though i am a sinner and because i am a sinner okay let me repeat that oh lord i do believe thou though i am a sinner and because i am a sinner i believe in thee with all my heart thou art the truth and thy word i believe what is religion mm, that's a good question what is religion it is the conformity of the whole being to the will of god let me repeat that what is religion and i was looking at me hi go what is religion it is the conformity to the whole being to the will of god so god is not going to bend his will for us my sister and brother we are the individual that he had created so we are the ones that need to go to him it says you know it says ask and you shall receive but you have to knock you have to go with the one be the one to go and and examine yourself and examine yourself uh jesus is like remember one with the hundred sheep and then he looked and one was missing and he went to find that one okay so we are the lost sheep so we are the ones the savior is always knocking on our door if you look he's always knocking on our door a heart door and we as individual need to be the one to let him in he is a gentleman he will not force himself in so it stayed here what is the religion it is the conformity to the whole being to the will of god if any man will come after me christ said let him deny himself take up his cross daily and follow me and this is luke 9 23. you need an intelligent belief in the word of god the word is our rule of action you are not to stand alone saying what must i do the first question with you is what must i believe let me repeat this okay you are not to stand alone saying what must i do the first question with you is what must i believe right believing means right doing christ gave his life to make it possible for you to be a partaker of the divine nature remember that the lord will bless all who put their trust in him your sister ellen g white and this was uh this was a, a discouraged church member that she was referring to so uh, your sister, Ellen G. White. So that concludes my devotion to whom shall I confess? And it states here, you need to go um, pub, um, if you should not do public, public, public. If it's something you do, you need to go privately to God and talk to him about it. Talk to him about it or confess it to him, I should say. Confess to him. So here is this, uh, my, hymn, my hymn, Be Still My Soul. Be still, my soul. Let me drink some water. Okay. Be still, my soul. Be still, my soul. The Lord is on thy side. Bear patiently the cross of grief 
or pain. Okay. Be still, my soul. The Lord is on thy side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to thy God to order and provide. In every change, his faithful will remain. Be still, my soul, thy best, the heavenly friend. Through torn way, lead to a joyous end. Be still, my soul, thy God does undertake to guide the future as he had the rest. Thy hope, thy confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul, the wave and wind still knows, the voice who rules them while he dwells below. Be still, my soul, the hour is hastened on, when we shall be forever with the Lord, when disappointment, grief, and fear are gone, sorrows forgotten, love, purest joy we store. Be still, my soul, when change and tears are past, all safe and blessed we shall meet at last. So, my sister, my brother, um, so uh, let us bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you for this message today. Continue to be with each one of us, Father God. Father God, as we continue to ask you to forgive us, to cleanse us, to purify us, Father God, we also ask to God, Father God, that you fulfill us with the love that we need for one another. We thank you, Father God, for giving us a new day to get our lives in order. We forever give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, so if this was the blessing to you, can you hit the like button, make a comment, hit the share button, follow me over on YouTube under Bridella Warrior. While you're there, hit the subscribe button, bell notification. Whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, you can give me a thumbs up, make comments, and all that great stuff. All that great stuff. And then, uh, what else? What else? And then, one more thing, one more thing. May I have a hug? May I have a hug? Here we go. One, two, three. I need to call back my husband, so I saw my little bit rushing right now. So, my sister, my brother, continue to serve the Lord. Continue to remain faithful. I serve him, serve him, serve him. Things getting difficult, but nevertheless, the Lord will see you through. He will see me through, my sister, my brother. So, happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. We know fr uh, Friday sundown to Saturday sundown is the Sabbath, and it's a 20 24 hour cycle, my sister and brother. And God says, remember the Sabbath day, Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11, talks about the fourth commandment. And God asking us to be to remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. So my sister and brother, happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. And may God continue to richly bless you and your family. Until then, be blessed and take care.